Welcome to 108 Contemporary. My name is Sophie Velasco. I am an intern here, and today I'll be walking you through a stitched flag craft kit inspired by the works of Marilyn Artis in her exhibition Assorted American Commentary, which is on display here from April 7th through May 21st, 2023. Let's get into it. In your craft kit, you will find instructions, a piece of scrap cloth. Yours might look different from the one I'm using, but it'll work just the same. A small packet containing a needle, a few colors of thread, two buttons, and a safety pin. And a piece of vinyl, which will be the backing for our flag. And in this craft kit, we'll also be using the bag itself, so make sure you hold on to it. For this craft kit, you will also need a pair of scissors, a ruler, a pen or a pencil, and coloring utensils of some kind. These can be markers, crayons, colored pencils, or anything else you'll be able to color with. And optionally, you can look around at your surroundings and find other materials to give your flag a more personalized touch. Think of things like magazine pages, newspapers, different kinds of scrap cloth, or anything else that seems interesting that you'd be able to sew onto your flag. Marilyn Artis uses a lot of ephemeral things in her flags, or things that were made to be used and thrown away like old ticket stubs, used matchboxes, and so on. So try and see if you can find any interesting ephemeral things that you can include in your flag. To get started, you'll want to take your paper bag that all your materials came in and lay it flat against a hard surface. Then you'll want to take your scissors and cut across the top of your bag in a straight line to create a clean edge. Now, you'll want to take your coloring utensils and color or doodle in the space next to that clean edge that you've made. You should fill the space at least three and a half inches from the cut you made. And while you're doing this, don't worry too much about trying to plan out what the finished flag will look like. Think instead of colors, images, or patterns that you like. Try and make it spontaneous. Now, after you've finished coloring your bag, you'll want to take your ruler and your pen or pencil and measure out seven strips of paper five inches long by a half inch wide on the part of the bag that you've colored, starting from the clean cut that you made. And now, after you've measured out all those strips of paper, you'll want to take your scissors and cut them out. These will end up being the stripes on your flag. Once all your strips of paper are cut out, Take a moment to rearrange them into an order you think looks interesting for your flag. If you found any other materials you'd like to have in your flag, now is a good opportunity to include them. Just cut any materials into the same 5 inch by 1 half inch strips and use them to replace some of the strips you've cut from your paper bag. Try out different combinations to see what you like best. Now at this point, you'll want to unpack your needle and untangle one of the threads. We're going to be using multiple of these colors throughout the piece, so just pick whichever one you want to go with at first. Here, I'm going to start with green. And once your thread of choice is untangled, you'll want to thread your needle with it, and then take one end of your thread and tie it in a double knot. Thank you. 
And with that, we are ready to start sewing. Now, to get started, you'll want to take your piece of vinyl that came in your craft kit, and you'll want to remove the backing on it. Then you'll want to take the strip of paper that you want to be the top of your flag and align the long side of the strip with one of the long sides of the vinyl. Hold it in place there with one hand, and with your other hand, take your threaded needle to the back of the vinyl at the corner, and you'll want to push the needle through the vinyl and paper and pull the thread through until the knot you made hits the back of the vinyl. We're going to be using a running stitch to secure all our strips of paper to the vinyl, which is just your basic in and out stitch. So now that the needle is at the front of the piece, while making sure that your strip of paper is still aligned with the top of the vinyl, push the needle back through the paper and vinyl to the back of the piece about a quarter inch to the side of your starting point. And pull it through until it's taut. And now we're just going to be repeating this in and out motion to sew the paper to the vinyl, following the edge of the paper as we reach corners until we circle all the way back around to where we started. And remember to be mindful about how close your stitches are to the edge of the paper. Leave about a quarter inch between the edge of the paper and your stitches to minimize the chance of ripping it. Here I've reached the corner of my flag, so it's time for me to turn my stitches to continue following the edge of the strip of paper. So I'm just going to take my flag and turn 90 degrees with my stitches, following the edge of the strip of paper, and just continue on my way. Like that. And as I reach the second corner right here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to just turn 90 degrees with my stitches to continue following the edge of the paper. And then I'll just continue on my way. So now that I've circled back to my starting point, I am going to tie off my thread. So making sure that my needle is at the back of the piece, I am going to tuck my needle underneath one of the stitches and pull it through. But before I pull it all the way through, I am going to loop my needle through the loop that was created and then pull it taut. And then I'm going to repeat this process two or three times to make sure I have a good knot so that I can cut off my thread and tie off the stitching. And once my knot here is nice and secure, I'm just going to take my scissors and 
cut the thread off. Congrats, you've sewed the first stripe onto your flag. If your needle still has a good amount of thread on it, you can just tie a new knot on one end and continue using it. But if at any point you find yourself running out, just tie a knot on the back of your flag wherever you are in your work, re-thread your needle with a different color of thread from the ones provided, tie a new knot on one end, and pick up right where you left off in your stitching. My needle here still has a good amount of thread on it, so I'm just going to tie a new knot. Now we're just going to repeat the same process for the rest of the strips of paper. Take your second stripe and align it up underneath the first one, and just like with the first stripe, take your needle and begin sewing it to the vinyl with a running stitch. As you're sewing these stripes on, try to make sure that they are somewhat straight. It can be easy for them to become skewed as you work, so just make sure you are holding them in the way you want them to align as you sew them on. Now, at this point, I have two stripes sewed onto my flag, but the thread attached to my needle has gotten pretty short, so I'm going to go ahead and re-thread it with a new color. I'm just going to pick a new color from our options and untangle it from the others. And just like the first time, I'm going to take my needle, thread it with my thread, and tie it off on one end. And now I'm ready to continue sewing. The process for sewing the rest of the stripes on is the same as the first two, so at this point I'm just going to go ahead and sew the rest of them on. See you in a bit! Now, I have all of my stripes sewed onto my flag, so now it's time to move onto the box where all the stars are in the original American flag. In my flag, I'm going to do this with the scrap of cloth that came in my bag, but this is also another opportunity to use any found ephemeral materials that you have. I'm going to take my piece of cloth and with my ruler measure out a rectangle that is two inches long by one and a half inches wide. And once I've got that all measured out, I'm going to take my scissors and cut out that rectangle. And now I'm going to take that cloth and align it with the top left corner of my flag, making sure that the longer side of the cloth is aligned against the long side of the flag. And just like with the stripes, I'm going to hold this in place with one hand and start my running stitch with the other. And just like before, I'm going to follow the edge of the cloth with a running stitch until I eventually circle back to where I started, where I'll tie it off with a knot at the back of the flag. Congrats, your flag is pretty much complete. At this point, you could just leave your flag as is and call it done, or you could add some extras to it. The craft kit comes with two buttons, so I'm gonna go ahead and add those to my flag. If you have different buttons or other found materials you'd still like to add to your flag, now is a good time to do that. Now, after deciding where on my flag I'd like my buttons to be, I'm going to take my needle, with the thread still tied off on one end, and while holding the button in the desired location, carefully push your needle from the back of the flag through one of the middle holes. And now I'm going to put the needle through the hole diagonal of the one I started at. 
and pull it through. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the two other holes to make an X shape in the middle of my button. And now I'm just going to repeat this process a couple of times to make sure my button is secure. Then tie it off at the back and cut my extra thread off. And I'm going to repeat the exact same process for the second button putting the needle through the holes diagonal of each other to create an X, repeating that process a few times, and then tying it off at the back. And with that, I am done with my stitched flag. And I'd love to see how yours came out as well, so go ahead and tag us at 108 Contemporary on social media to show us how it turned out. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time.